Welcome to Hashtag Fish, the channel where we teach the science behind shrimp and fish farming. In this video, we will talk about how to correctly prepare the pond bottom before we even think about filling the pond with water. Pond bottom preparation is one of the key principles in the success of shrimp farming. It doesn't mean that with a good preparation, the success is guaranteed. If you prepare the pond well, but you have no idea about the quality of your PLs, you're playing lottery. For that, watch Gianna's video on how to check the quality of your PLs before buying and stocking them in your ponds. If you tested your PLs and you're sure they are top quality, but you haven't prepared your pond correctly, shrimp will not develop well and their survival won't be what you wished for. Firstly, let's talk about the worst thing someone can do, and that is to harvest a pond and then immediately fill it back up again with water and restock with PLs or juveniles. Intuitively, many farmers think that they will get more cycles per year, so why to waste time? The reason is because it backfires. Too much organic matter left from one cycle to another will rotten on the pond bottom where the shrimp live and it will debilitate them. Also, the number one thing that should be avoided is to bring anything alive from one cycle to another. This is the opportunity to break any disease cycle. Nutrients from the urine and feces of the shrimp and the uneaten feces are released to the water. These nutrients are taken up by algae and bacteria, which only live for a few hours or days and eventually die and settle. And we have now all of this sludge to deal with. In the previous video, I spoke about sustainable farm designs and how they deal with this affluence. So have a look at the previous video if you haven't yet. Okay, basically pond bottom preparation is all about good hygiene and this involves two things, cleaning and disinfection. The first thing is to remove as much organic matter in this pond as possible. In a body of water, only the first few millimeters of the sediment that gets into contact with water is oxygenated and oxidized. Below this thin layer, oxygen can no longer penetrate. What happens is that organic matter continues to be decomposed anaerobically and the products of this decomposition lack oxygen. So out of carbon, we end up with methane. Out of sulfur, we may end up with hydrogen sulfide and out of nitrogen we end up with ammonia. As you can see, what these compounds have in common is the fact that they lack oxygen. All of these products are nasty to shrimp. This is why we must get rid of excessive organic matter and in super intensive system we must get rid of all of it. In a tank or in a line pond this can be done by hosing the sludge off the drain for treatment. The second step is letting the pond to get completely dry. This is why all ponds must be built in such a way where they can be dry completely. Think here with me. What do bugs like? They do like water and organic matter. And what don't bugs like? Bugs don't like too much heat, they don't like dry, and they don't like UV. Luckily for us, we can take advantage of air to oxygenate the sediment and the sun to help us with the heat and UV disinfection for free. This is why it's so important not only to dry the pond, but to till the soil to expose the top layer to the air and the sun. In an earthen pond, if the layer of sludge has gotten really thick, then it must be removed with heavy machinery. But even in earthen ponds, with the correct soil preparation of each cycle, we can avoid the buildup of organic matter from one cycle to the next, so that you may have never to go with heavy machinery or at least do it only every few years. But how do we do it? Once the pond is dry enough, the first thing we must do is to walk inside and evaluate what is left. Is there any dead shrimp or fish? Are there difficult areas to dry? When do we think it will be dry enough so we can get a tractor coming in? We definitely want to avoid the tractor to get stuck in the mud, but 
we don't want the soil to be too dry because it's important to till and grade it with some moisture which the aerobic bacteria need to eat away this organic matter. We should also measure the pH of the bottom to correct for acidic areas with agricultural limestone. pH of the soil can be measured directly in the field or by taking a sample and drying the soil at 60 degrees, sieving it, then mixing with equal parts of distilled water and using a common pH probe. The amount of lime to be used depends on the pH value of the soil. The more acidic it is, the more you will need. The quality of the limestone is also important, more so in terms of the size of the particles. You don't want clumps of lime. The thinner it is, the better it will neutralize the acidity of your soil. In earthen ponds, it is very important to know the percentage of organic material in the soil. It is easy to measure, but it will need a muffle oven. This can be done by weighing the soil that has been previously dry at 60 degrees overnight, then burning it at 440 degrees overnight again and measuring the weight of the ash on the next day. I will leave a link to this method in the video description below on how you can calculate the percentage of organic matter in the soil. I want to show to you guys how to burn soil so you can assess the difference between dry soil and the soil after it has been burned so you can measure the ashes. You will use a muffle oven. This is uh, what it is. porcelain cup like this with the soil on top to burn it. We want to maintain the levels of organic matter below 4%. If the levels of organic matter are above 6%, you will have a problem. In this case, even if the soil pH is above 7, lime in your pond will help the bacteria to accelerate the decomposition of this organic matter. Many times, aerating the soil and liming is not enough. One thing that limits the bacteria to fully degrade organic matter in the soil is the insufficient amount of nitrogen for the soil bacteria to do their job. This is because organic matter has too much carbon and not enough nitrogen which the bacteria needs. So, it is highly beneficial to provide nitrogen to the soil which will help these bacteria to degrade the organic matter, to oxidize the soil and to provide nutrients to the phytoplankton later in culture. It is a triple win situation. I should say that there are many forms of nitrogen fertilizers that we could use. Some of them, like urea, were designed for agriculture and they are terrible for aquaculture. The only nitrogen fertilizer that I use and would recommend is nitrate for three important reasons. Nitrate has three oxygen molecules and oxygen is our friend more so in the bottom where shrimp live. When bacteria uses nitrate to decompose organic matter, it doesn't produce any toxic compounds like with the other nitrogen fertilizers. And lastly, nitrate is the best source of nitrogen for diatoms which are the most rich microalgae in terms of lipids for shrimp. How much nitrate to use depends on the levels of organic matter, but 25 to 50 kilograms of calcium nitrate or sodium nitrate per hectare is a good start. If there's too much organic matter in the soil, say 6% or above, you can go with 100 kilos per hectare or a bit more. The best way to prepare the bottom of a shrimp pond that incorporates the limey materials and the nitrate involves four steps. Number one, tilling the bottom following parallel lines, applying 50 to 70% of the lime and the nitrate needed, so the product will get into the damp crevices. Tilling the bottom perpendicular to the first pass to help mixing and incorporation of the products in the soil and further exposing it to the air and the sun. And lastly, applying the remainder of the products as a top coat. Areas where the soil are more acidic or more organic deserve more attention. 
Areas which are always wet or moist need to be disinfected and this can be done more cheaply with hydrated lime or burnt lime. That will increase the pH above 10 and kill everything. Chlorination can also be used for disinfection, but it is a bit more expensive. The easiest way is to sprinkle calcium hypochlorite, those granular types using swimming pools, in the wet areas of the pond. Of course, these products are toxic to us too, and we need to protect ourselves not to get burned. One thing to keep in mind is that we should do the best job possible, but in certain ponds it's not possible to eliminate all the carrier of pathogens from the soil or from the water. If there has been a disease outbreak in the previous cycle, the preparation must be even better and the additional use of 1 to 2 tons of hydrated lime per hectare will reduce the pathogen loads. There are also insecticides that can eliminate vectors of virus like white spot syndrome virus which have a short lifespan and are highly biodegradable within a few days. But I don't think insecticides are the way to go. In earthen ponds, and in many cases in line ponds which are not covered, they are also not effective. If you watch my previous video to the end, you will see that there are shrimp farm designs and husbandry procedures where we can achieve very high yields without the use of these chemicals. And with a very stable environment, the shrimp don't get sick even if these pathogens are present. The pond bottom preparation methods I explained in this video are all about having a good hygiene between crops. In earthen ponds, it is all about neutralizing acidity and reducing organic matter to acceptable levels by the shrimp. We do that by assisting the bacteria naturally present in the soil to do their job by giving them oxygen with tilling. Once the soil is totally dry though, the bacteria cannot continue to eat away that organic matter. The last step in disinfection of wet areas and a good sunburn over the pond bottom at the last stage definitely help with that. So now your shrimp pond is ready to be filled for the next crop. Thank you, subscribe to Hashtag Fish and see you in the next video.